Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm Debbie Schwartz, founder of Road to College and the Paying for College 101 Facebook group. I'm here tonight with Ellen Whalen. She is our counselor in residence um, for our College Insights Academy mm -hmm. program that we run. And um, tonight we're gonna go through a common app. Um, we have um, a sample common app and then an actual real common app that a student submitted that um, we're going to walk through. And uh, Ellen is gonna show you how she normally honestly reviews um, a common app. It is a service we provide uh, if people want another set of eyes for, uh, to, uh, you know, more professional set of eyes to look at their students' common app. And um, as she walks through, she's gonna point out what she normally looks at and what type of recommendations she makes. And it will be helpful for everybody attending, you know, and if, if you're the parent, you can use this information to review your students' common app. If you're the student, hopefully you're using this information as you fill out your common app. So, um, that's the game plan. Um, so just to a few other housekeeping. Um, I really, unfortunately, usually, you know, I'm, we're pretty good on time. We kind of let these things roll, but I do need to finish up tonight by 9.30. So we're gonna try and be concise. Um, please put your questions uh, in the chat uh, because we're trying to finish up by 9.30. Uh, I'm gonna look at the questions. We may not get to everything. I'm probably gonna hold them to the end, but we will look at all the questions if we don't answer any big ones and we'll respond and include some information in a follow-up email. So with that, Ellen, and of course, how about let's always start off. We'd love to know who's out there, who's here tonight. I assume most of everybody is here um, who has a high school senior. Um, and um, I guess here's the question. Has your star student started their common app and it's okay if they haven't you know it's still you know it's we're not under crazy deadlines yet uh so let me know um where you're watching from and if your student started so okay it looks like the majority have and again don't feel bad if you haven't um great all over love seeing that Vermont, New Jersey, Florida, Chicago, Delaware, woo, all over the place, Houston, Texas, Wisconsin. Okay, great crowd tonight. So I'm gonna um, give it over to Ellen and um, Ellen's going to share um, a mock uh, common app that she's created and, uh, and then a real student one that we received. Great, thank you, Debbie. So I'm excited to be here tonight and um, give you some secrets, AKA tips and tricks to help your students stand out um, through their narrative. And you might ask, what is their narrative? The narrative is, I'll give you an example. Say there's a computer, uh, a student that wants to major in computer science and they also happen to love um, music and through their common app, um, maybe they went to, well, excuse me, in their major or when they're in college, they want to explore the intersection of computer science and music. So in the Common App, we want to see this examples of how um, they've taken computer science classes. Maybe they, they um, are passionate about computer science with maybe making their own computer, different activities around that, along with um, maybe musical you know, instruments they play, things like that. So that the Common App supports what the student wants to study or do in college. And that's the narrative of the um, that we should hopefully see woven throughout the Common App. So, um, if the college list drives everything, the the Common App encapsulates everything, and it's basically about depending upon how many supplemental essays there are, it's about thirteen pages in total. Your students, you know, whole high school career is reduced down to about thirteen pages, um, and then. Part of that is just the biographical, you know, and so that eats up a few of those pages. So the common app, there is, there are two parts to the common app. There's the part that is common to all of the colleges, and then there are the college specific parts. So um, you could do the common app, put everything in once, never change it, and that will go out to all the colleges. But what you drill down into specific colleges, if there are supplemental essays and stuff, that would then be attached to the common part. That being said, 
the common app can be altered for every application, application, the common part, because it gets sent off each time anew to each college. They are not sent off to 10 colleges in mass. So just so people understand that, but once the common app is sent to a college, you can't change it. You can't change what was sent to that college. You can change what you send to the next college. So I just, those are some little things that not everyone- So and understands. Ellen, while you're talking about that, do you wanna maybe um, address that, um, as you mentioned, some schools have additional essays than yes. just the common one. And I'm gonna one. get into that, correct. Got it. Yeah, yeah, if you don't. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> to, yeah, I'm gonna, sh um, I'm going to share my screen in a second. I just want to say one other thing that um, is important, and this is a kind of a, an important secret, um, so to speak. I didn't choose the word secret, Debbie did, so I'm trying to weave it throughout. It would not be my choice, but I'm going to. Last year, it was common mistakes, but that's fine. I will work with it. So I wrote, I highlighted secret here, so I have it. So um, if, uh, if your student is applying early decision or early action, and they get like um, back in December information about maybe they got deferred early decision or maybe they got rejected. Um, then it, it behooves people, not students not to send all their applications in at once. It, even though they might be excited to send in, they think it's gonna show demonstrated interest, there's no reason to send in an application November 15th when it's not due until January 15th. So if they're doing some early, hold back on the regular decision because if they don't get in, maybe there's something that should, should have been adjusted in the common app. And then you can look at it and reassess. So I just, that's another important So that's a really good suggestion. So for students who have a mix of, I mean, they're applying, maybe they're applying early decision. We highly encourage anybody who's applying to a school and they have early action, students should consider it. But if so, if the student is applying to any schools early, plus they're applying regular, you're suggesting that they send in the, the early ones to meet those deadlines, but maybe hold back on regular to see what the outcome is of the early yes. acceptances, because if they aren't accepted, it might mean like they need to re relook at their common app and make some tweaks. Yes, and sometimes counselors try to pressure, I'm sorry, I thought I had like lowered this enough in case there was some, I will completely, there we go. Some counselors press students especially at like private schools to get everything done at a certain deadline because they just want to be done. And that's a discussion with them about saying, hey, I don't know that I want to send everything off just yet. Maybe everything can be lined up, but then you say, I'm not pushing the button on this yet. So that's just something. I'm going to now share um, my screen and get into what we're going to do. Um, share here, and then I'm going to here. Okay, so here is my mocked up common app. And I want to show you, I'm going to go to the dashboard. And this is, I think, something that they um, started doing like last year. And a lot of people don't know about this yet. If you hit in the upper right hand corner, application requirements, it goes into uh, another page and it has everything all laid out with um, deadlines and testing policy and recommenders, how many they let you do. So that's a really uh, nice little trick there. So I just want to point that out. And then um, within, I just threw in some random colleges, but I wanted to show you, it's important for students to make sure they fill out the college, individual college information fully because they might think, oh, the Common App's the most important part. And then the night before they're gonna send off the University of Vermont, they go into, oh, let me just answer questions. Oh, they wanna know what term I wanna start, da, 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 da. Wait a minute, there's an essay here. No one told me UVM had an essay. I didn't know that. So then they suddenly have to write an essay. So they want to thoroughly go through all of those. And then another odd thing is that, so it's under questions. Well, you think the essay would be under writing. Sometimes it's under writing. So under UVM's writing, it's just asking you about disciplinary violations. Where's the writing? It's very odd. So you have to thoroughly go through these. Sometimes, um, you know, often, like I said, there, there could also be, uh, there's can be an, uh, an activity section under these. And sometimes there's a hidden question um, under the activities just with a hidden essay. Like, why do you like to do the activity you like to do? So again, just have them thoroughly go under. And also if they hit honors college, sometimes, 
they get lucky and another essay pops up. Why do they want to go to this, you know, be in the honors college? So those are all things to be mindful of. All right, now we're going to go into the common part of the common app. This is the part that everyone sees. So I'm just going to go through, um, this is, you can, uh, the, the preview. So I had filled out the information and um, I want to say the uh, email address that the student uses to sign up for the Common App, it needs to be professional. There, you know, it can't be some, I, I don't even want to come up with something it shouldn't be. It should be professional. And maybe the student even makes a new one that says, I love engineering, you know, at gmail.com. You know, that can catch an, um, you know, an uh, admissions officer's eye. It's just something to think about, but it should, it can be their, their school ID. It just should not be inappropriate. Okay, so I filled this out. And the most um, important thing I want to just point out on this page, this is just the first part, the um, beginning of the personal information. Um, there's a language section. And often students just put in English and that's it. But if they have some kind of proficiency on another lang in another language that they're studying in school, or maybe they're bi or trilingual, this is the place for it. So um, they don't have to be fluent, but if they've been studying, studying Spanish for four or five years, I hope they can speak, read, and write. So just something to think about. All right, now I'm going to jump to, let me get this out of the way so I can get, I'm jumping out of this and now I'm going to go into family and I'm going to hit preview again. And so this is just uh, parents and um, you can see here in this case, I think I, I just put, I guess it's just the mother. I don't know why, but you can see even um, if you're saying if a school is test blind, they can see that this mother is an accountant and she went to college and they can get and they know my zip code. So they can get a sense of um, perhaps, you know, our income. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into education. And a, a mistake students sometimes make is um, th they wanna know if you've gone to a different, uh, if you have any credits at a, you know, college or university. And sometimes students will put down, they went to the Brown summer program. And, um, but that is a non, it's for non-credit courses. So they didn't get credit. So they aren't getting a transcript. So it should not be here. It can be a summer activity, but it does not go here if they aren't getting a transcript from the school. So that can be a mistake that can be made. Um, if the student schools rank, you put the rank in. A lot of schools no longer rank. Um, for GPA, um, generally, I've just given up on this one. Basically, <laughs> you... Most students put in that they have a weighted GPA and they put it opposite of 4.0. Um, if you go into it, you can choose a 4.0, 5.0, 6.0, 100. They've got all different choices. Um, but this is, I think, what most counselors tell students to just do. So they, if, they're, um, if, if they do have a weighted GPA, choose that, put what it is in and just put it against a 4.0, even though it would be helpful to know if it's against a 6.0. But for on, on what the weighted scale is, but um, this is what most people recommend. So if you're not sure, ask your counselor. All right, I um, inputted um, senior year grades, excuse me, not grades, classes. That's what goes in here. And then we get to honors. Um, students can put in five honors and I think they have, uh, is it 50 characters um, to describe the honor or 100? I'm blanking at the top of my head right now. I think it might be a hundred. Um, whatever it is, mo the most common mistake I see people put in national honor, honors society, the extra S it's national honor society. And sometimes they'll say it's a national award. It is a school award because it's the school that determines it. It's a national organization, really minor thing, but just wanted to point it out. Uh, I had a student um, put down, like listed all of his classes that were honors, like honors math class. So that doesn't go here. And another student um, gave themselves an honor being top 3% of the class, which is great that they're in the top 3%, but that's not really an honor. That's something that maybe the counselor can write about, uh, but it just doesn't belong here. So those are some of the mistakes I've seen under honors. Um, if you, your student's lucky enough to have a true national or regional award, 
that should be first because that's you know really impressive. Uh, and um, generally, the rule of thumb here is athletic awards or honors don't go here because it's supposed to be academic. But some people say you can put athletic awards there. Um, the athletic award can easily be tied into um, if, if you're doing a sport and you say, you know, you can put it there because there's room to put it there. So that might be the better place for it. Worst case, there's always additional information section. Okay, next thing is future Wait, so plans. So Ellen, sorry, yes. just to clarify, um, are you saying the national, if your student is, is a member of the National Honor Society, does that go in this section or activities? Well, that, that's the thing. And yeah, thank you for bringing it up. Um, so it can go in either. Generally, if you um, have 10 activities, you don't want to double dip on both of them because you want each thing to kind of shine. Some students that don't have 10 activities will double dip and say hey, they have the honor of it. And then they'll talk about in the activity what specifically they've done in National Honor Society, like whether or not they've tutored, whether or not um, you know, they're uh, leading the, you know, the program or the meetings or they're volunteering. So you have to see how many activities your student has. So you may or may not want to do both spaces because spaces are precious because there are only 10 activities and five honors. So that's an individual, you know, on an individual case basis. Okay. So future plans. Um, in this one, you can choose doctor, uh, engineer, the accountant, all these different ones. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can hit other and write in whatever you want. And this is where the narrative can pop out. So I'm trying to put different examples throughout, not just sticking, say, with that computer science music example. So in this one, I wrote, um, pediatrician, I want to work in underserved communities focusing on pediatric cancer patients. So, um, and, then the, and then you choose degree. So the degree shouldn't be medicine. It shouldn't be bachelor's, you know, because you want the degree to match the job. Um, so this, so with this future plans, I want to see someone that's maybe really involved in um, community service, someone who maybe has volunteered at um, a hospital, someone who's taking um, AP chemistry and AP biology and things like that. And that's what I would want to see with this kind of a narrative. All right. And this is where it also kind of helps to kind of like, you, you know, it just makes it different, you know, because you, yes. if you pick other, you get the chance to describe it. Yes, I think that's 100 characters. Could be wrong, but you'll find out by putting things in. Okay, so now we're going to jump to testing, and I'm going to hit the preview here. All right, so this is where you would put in your SATs or your ACTs. Um, and uh, so we fill this out. They want to know when you took the test, how many times you've taken it, if you have any plan for the future. If you've taken AP subject test, you put in the scores that you want to share. If you got a two in something and you don't want to share it, you don't have to. You wouldn't list it then. But you also list the future classes, you know, the exams you will be taking. So May of 2023. Those are uh, World History and AB, Calc, Calc AB. So that's what goes in in testing. And you could, like I said, you can do the ACT there. Okay, so now I'm going to get into the true heart of the application, which is, which the heart is the, the are the activities. So um, I put in um, a variety of things in here to give you a, a sampling of what's going on. So some of them are common mistakes I see, and some of them are ones that I would recommend. So lots of students do sports and it's hard to like, what do you say about basketball, right? So basketball teammate, captain, JV, varsity, and then played on basketball team. Like that, when I do the reviews, is a common thing I'll see. So I just made something up to show examples of cool things a student could say. So first of all, I made captain first. Do reverse chronological order and lead with the most impressive title. I also capitalize captain uh, so it pops. Um, you see over here, it's lost in the top one. So basketball, captain, MVP, 11th, teammate, varsity team, 11th, the 12th, JV, 9th, 10th, broke school record, 700 baskets in 11th, lead by example, mentor ninth grade members, give it my all every practice and game. 
we know a lot more about the student than that they played basketball now. So that's a way to flesh it out because um, the, the common app, as I've said um, in other talks, is very skeletal and you just want to flesh everything out and you have 50 characters for the title, fit, um, 100 for the name of the organization and 150 for the description. But you can see I ran it all kind of together. I threw in the MVP in 11th. I could have put that down below. I was trying to maximize all of it so it just reads nicely. Even though it appears this way when you enter things, it's broken up. Teammate, captain, JV, varsity, um, you know, this is my poor example, but you can see the point. But the way I had it um, flow, it just reads as if it's one like little mini paragraph. So don't be afraid of connecting them and just toggle back and forth into the preview. Uh, so you can see what it looks like. Another common, oh, and um, also we have, you know, what another thing I forgot, often hours are um, underrated. It can be, sometimes kids go overboard, but with sports, you know, often kids don't think about traveling, all the games, things like that. So I made it 14 hours instead of seven. I thought that that, you know, that's just another example. Oh, and also a mistake in this one is played the, uh, the student's still doing it in 12th grade. So this is a bad example because it's too thin, but it would be play on basketball team. All right. And I also believe in not having commas because it takes up a precious space if you're trying to maximize it out. So I'd like to use semicolons and no comma because they aren't sentences. It's like a resume. All right. So next thing, government, very, very common. VP, high school student government, attended meetings, it should uh, be again, attend meetings, help plan homecoming and prom fundraise, very common. Where is something that is really measurable? Where is the impact that the student made? How does the student stand out from the other 30,000 vice presidents of high schools just for one year, forget 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, you know, the student happened to be very good and had it all four years. But, um, okay, so what I did was I, um, you know, just made it more dynamic and uh, vice president in caps, focus on sustainability, high school student government. So in this thing, the student's really into, um, you know, the green movement. And so really good action verb, spearheaded plastic recycling and water fountains for reusable bottles, met with cafeteria, to, cafeteria manager to reduce waste compost, raised $2,000 for initiative. These are all in the past just because they were kind of things that were done. Um, you know, so that's why they're in the past, but obviously the student's very active, engaged, and this is going on. Um, I want to point out, you can see how I'm missing 10th here, and I'll show you why and how that happens. So when you go in, like here I am doing this. If I just happen to, just happen to like touch, it, it gets. You have to be go back and make sure, just because you're bouncing around, that you don't happen to knock one of the grades out. Um, they're very sensitive. Oh, and while I'm here, I want to show you. Um, you can move things. So if I want to move this up, it goes up to the top. If I want to move it down, I move it down. Because order is very important. A lot of students do not lead with the most important thing. Let's go back to our computer science person. If this person wants to major in computer science, you wouldn't, he, wouldn't, he or she wouldn't put the activity, the computer science activities as, as like fourth, fifth, and sixth. They should be first, second, third, if there are three. So we, the um, admissions officers are board speed readers. They might be reading tw you know, 20 applications in a day, maybe more, you know, maybe 30. They're, they get tired, they're only human. You wanna put the most important things first because maybe they'll only read the top three thoroughly if you're lucky and skim the rest. So you just don't know. So always assume that they might not read everything. So lead with the most important. Okay, so now I'm just gonna say, you know, instruments, the same thing, kind of hard to expand upon. I didn't do a, another, a, a better example of this, but I'll just quickly say that um, it could be, 
you know, what's their favorite kind of music? Have they had solos in the band? Um, how long, when did they start playing? You know, do they practice at home? Um, do they take private lessons? You know, who's there? Do they um, specialize in jazz? You know, maybe they have a jazz band, but you know what I mean? Do they like improvisation? Um, and oboes aren't in jazz. And I know that too, because my daughter played the oboe. But um, anyway, those are just ways to just tease it out and make it more interesting. Who's their favorite composer? Things like that. All right. So a lot of people overlook family responsibilities. Um, that's something that uh, has been added to the Common App because there are students that that's a big part of their life and it's important. So, you know, um, spell it out. Watch younger siblings after school until 530 help with dinner a couple nights a week and maybe there's more the student can talk about but that's good to know the schools want to know how a student is spending his or her time it's not so much necessarily judgment of how they're spending their time obviously they want to see some support of um if you have a passion and something you want to major in they'd like to see support for it but they also understand you know that you have other responsibilities but they just want to know what it is what is, how are you spending your time are you just you know, watching Netflix all the time. You don't want to tell them that. <laughs> so, um, okay, now jobs are really important. Um, I mean, students don't have to have jobs, but if they do, it's looked upon favorably. Um, it shows maturity and responsibility. Uh, and so, and with this one, I, you know, did like, um, I tried to make it a little bit more interesting because students will just say, you know, you know, customer service, something like that. Uh, so take orders, train new employees, you know, that shows leadership. There are a lot of kids, you know, I ask them if they tr have trained employees, these places are turning over employee um, students all the time. So, you know, someone that just comes into the uh, restaurant might a month later be training someone. So often they're training and they forget that. So that's a nice thing to put in. They're closing the store. Um, maybe there's a cute little thing I just made up, make a mean milkshake, you know, a little bit of interest and texture and you know maybe they have to work to help with the family and that's good to know um so i that's a good one now i just took um these are a couple that are really fleshed out well i'm going to show how much how impactful they can be so um lead actor and assistant director they really pop with the capitals involved in three regional theaters and school theater started in 2013. So when people say, oh, my kid's been doing something before high school, or how do we get that in? Here's a way to stress that the student's been doing this for a long time, uh, because generally you wanna focus on high school. Experience all sides of theater, eight lead roles, 26 shows, rose from stagehand to assistant stage manager to assistant director at a professional theater it really shows a wide swath of how involved this particular student is in theater. And maybe this student it wants to major in theater. So that, if that's the case, that should be their number one activity. And um, then uh, a lot of uh, students have Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. You know, if you um, happen to be getting the Gold Award or Eagle Scout, you're obviously gonna focus on your uh, big project. But if you're just a regular member, you can still make it interesting. Um, Girl Scout senior member joined in 2013, go hiking, camping, and volunteer with friends, leadership and kindness stressed. These colleges want students that are kind. They want to have good roommates. They want people that are collaborative. So that's not a bad thing to stress, uh, whether it's in your, you know, uh, in your essay or maybe your uh, teachers are stressing that in their um, letters of recommendation. So in this uh, National Seashore helped with control burn, walk beaches, rescuing sea turtles through uh, Wellfleet Audubon toward New England Aquarium Turtle Facility. So just showing different, you know, a smattering of what the student did. Uh, so that is it for my suggestions of the activities. Now I'm going to um, jump to writing. So this is um, where the student would choose which essay they want to focus on uh, with regard to prompts. I always just believe, you know, share an essay um, on any topic of your choice. I like the prompts to get the student thinking, but 
they can write on anything, so they don't need to make something hit the prompt. So I don't really worry about the prompts. Um, they have 650 words to talk about their passion and what makes them unique potentially. What I encourage students to remember and keep in mind is that they are applying to be a student. So as much as the essay is a personal statement, as they call it, I really like to see perhaps in the end, at the very least, something where it wraps up, ties in like their major, like that's why I want to study this kind of thing more elegantly stated, but to that effect, I think it's helpful. They don't have to do it, but I think it's helpful because there are only so many places that a student can kind of drive home that narrative because if they don't make that connection, there, some of the schools they apply to might not have supplemental essays because a lot of the supplemental essays can be like, why this major? Why this activity? But if they don't have that, you never get to tell them why. So having a short, brief wrap up is helpful here. You don't want to go into it too much because then what do you do with why this major essay if there is a supplemental essay? You could come at it from a different angle. It doesn't mean you can't. Your essay could be all about computer science and how you love that music and that together. But um, you just want to then leave some room or maybe you have another activity you also love. Just things to think about as a student plans out what they want to do. And then um, there's the additional information section. And there's the part that was added for COVID. And um, so a mistake I've seen in this, uh, one student wrote, uh, thought, was told he had to write something no matter what. So he um, wrote about how the economy was affected um, by COVID in general, not how he was affected because he wasn't affected. So I told him not to use it if it wasn't relevant, but ways you might use it would be to explain why maybe an AP test score was not, you didn't do well on it because you were online and the teacher, it just was not a good situation. They could not keep up with the material. And um, that's one example. And maybe there's a drop in grades because of COVID. Uh, you just, the student didn't do well online or they had really bad internet, things like that. That is what this section is for. Or sadly, someone, you know, you, there was a serious health issue within the family and um, you and your family member were really affected. So then um, there is the additional information section. There are 650 words available. A lot of people don't utilize this section. You don't want to use it frivolously. You want to have some important things to say in there, but um, you do not want to copy a resume in here. You do not want to put supplemental essays in here if a school doesn't ask for a supplemental essay. Um, you don't say, oh, I happen to have an extra one from this college. I'll just throw it in here. No, you do not do that. Um, it should usually be brief, almost bulleted, uh, just not essay format, um, short things. Um, in this, you might uh, talk about just highlight an extended essay for the IB, perhaps, or if you're an AP seminar class, something like that, or the research paper you had to write, that's where it could be put in here and talk about in two or three sentences what exactly the research paper's title was and what you did. And hopefully, that ties in with what you want to study. If it doesn't, it's fine, but it's really cool if it does. Um, and if you have uh, a really long activity that you want to expand upon more, it can go here. Or if you have some acronyms that you need to shorten, you might put it here, especially that's kind of sometimes for the honors. That's a great thing because sometimes they're long and that you might need to use an acronym. And, but if don't assume that an acronym that is used at your school is this an acronym that everyone knows. So make sure that things are spelled out where there's room to do that. Um, and uh, you could say see additional information section in the activity section if you're going to expand upon something. And you might provide a link here to either a website that you have or if you wrote a newspaper article or one was written about something you, you had done. Um, it's kind of nice to see. Um, proof of things, especially with all these things we've heard about in the news, um, to just have things verified that you've done that you've done what you say you've done. Now, not every single thing can be verified, but if you happen to have proof, you know, put it in here if, if it makes sense to do. Um, and then an ex you could also explain like a drop in grades if it's unrelated to COVID. 
maybe you have a learning challenge or there's a family situation. This could also be reiterated by the counselor or the counselor themselves could completely address it. That's between you and them. You guys can decide that, but that's all good to put in here. So uh, I'm gonna go share um, a, a student's S, uh, common app. I'm gonna go through it quickly, but I, I, I forgot to say in the beginning that besides the um, common, you know, the common app, what else is in it? That, you know, the, there's the things that the student doesn't touch um, that goes along with it. And those would be letters of recommendation from the teacher. Hopefully the teacher is talking about how you are as a student in the classroom. Do you participate? Are you collaborative? Are you really positive? Um, things like that. And then the guidance counselor attaches, uh, they have their own form and they'll talk about things in general. Um, and they attach the school profile. So these things are like things students don't touch, but they make the application more full and complete so that the admissions officer can see you in the context, your grades, your rigor in the context of what your school offers. And then the teachers and counselor kind of come in and are another person get, talking about, you know, giving their impressions of you. And hopefully it all comes together in um, collectively in a uniform confirming way. All right, so now I will get, go to the, all right, so this is the, the Common App profile that a student generously shared with us. And I'm gonna um, kind of go through it quickly to get to the heart of it, which would be mostly the activities. And um, the student, you know, look at how many languages she speaks. I mean, it's really impressive, right? Um, unfortunately, I didn't see her highlight these kind of like in the essay and other places. She did a slight nod to French, um, but I would have liked to seen that play out a little bit more um, when she talks about living in Paris. I, maybe she could have peppered some French words in there a little bit. So just a thought. Um, okay, so I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything. Um, all right, she has um, dual enrollment. So she put that here under the colleges and universities. She has a rank, eighth at 118th. Um, she has a 4.4 weighted. And she um, is taking plans and she's gonna be taking two AP classes this senior year. And she has three awards to her national, National African American Recognition Scholar and the AP Scholar. So those are impressive. And what is she want to do? She wants to be a business executive, management administrative, and she wants to get a business um, degree, advanced degree, that's probably MBA here. Um, so this, she did not choose other. I would love to know what exactly, like does she have an idea of a field? Does she want to be an entrepreneur? Like this would be a perfect example because when we get into her activities, you will see that she has run her own business. So. I could see her doing something entrepreneurial here. Um, it'd just be interesting to, to learn more. This is just cookie cutter. So it's a missed opportunity to um, really expand her narrative better. Okay, really uh, good testing. Um, so, you know, if she wants to do business, so her math is strong, that helps her narrative. She has a five in AP Calc, um, AB, so that helps her narrative. Stats three. Maybe let, there's, let me just sorry. interrupt. Sorry, one because there's mm -hmm. some questions earlier about okay. the testing. Um, what if a student has taken the test? Um, they put it here, but they don't want to submit it to all their schools. Then for each one, they just take the testing out. So you can put it in and take it out. Just you know, um, yeah, it's as simple as that. Go into testing and and take it out, and then for the next school, if you want to share it, put it in. Same thing with the APs. You know. She might at state schools, you can get credit for three on stats. She might share um, that, but in another school um, where they only give credit for fours and fives, she might not want to share the three. Um, admissions officers can't um, see what they've seen. Um, this is one of those debated things because, well, isn't a three better than a one? And if you don't put a, if you don't share the three, they might assume you got a one. They're not supposed to assume something they don't see. Obviously they're human beings. I'm just explaining all sides of how people think regarding this. But let's say 
the three because she's so strong in calc maybe it was an anomaly because of they were online and the teacher could not get through all the material and that's a great thing to just put in the additional information section and maybe the counselor confirms it or maybe her math teacher stats teacher also maybe her calc teacher maybe they also put that in the letter of recommendation so these are all things that then help confirm it and support and this student did not use the additional information section. So that might be something she might want to put in. All right. So she's going to be taking English lit and uh, Spanish, Spanish here. All right. So um, this student starts off with her most important um, activity, which I assume it is. And it's her own business, which is really cool. So CEO, founder, online cruelty free, handmade, vegan, lit lip cosmetics business so she did a great job of just running that um, started at age 14 run all operations from sourcing supplies material to sales design maintain website products pictures and social media so this is this is well done what i would like to see and there probably isn't room here but maybe in the additional information section i'd like to see the website i took the name i googled it i found it i shouldn't have had to have done that you know it should be there for a quick click nice and easy. So um, some colleges let you upload a resume, some don't. Um, and that's where you would never upload a resume into the additional information section, for example, which I've seen students do. Uh, but that is the only issue I'm really seeing here. Um, then the next thing is, so we have a student, we, we white, white it out if you didn't figure that out, personal information. So um, the student is involved with, um, you know, student government and a uh, good job at the kind of like plan and organize um, events, approve new clubs. So Ellen, sorry, um, you mentioned resume. Yes. If a school does um, give the opportunity to upload a resume, what is your recommendation and how should the resume, what should be in the resume versus the, these, basically the common app for, or the activity section? Yeah, so I, a resume should really be one page. Sometimes students have them three pages. It should be a one page concise type of thing. Um, there's going to be, they can have links in it, live links. So that's really neat if they have it. There's just gonna be, these are, there are only 300 characters here. They're going to expand upon self. Not, they might have, they might actually have 13 things they do and that would all be on the resume. Um, resumes are great for interviews. Resumes are great if someone's introducing themselves to an admissions officer to ask a question. They're just, they have many, many um, purposes. Um, they can be great if they're applying for scholarships. So yes, there can be and will be some overlap. And the um, admissions officer doesn't have to like read it thoroughly, but let's say um, we wanna, you know, in this case, we don't have the um, website for the student. So if I had her resume, I would imagine it would be on the resume. And then I could say, oh, there it is. And then I could click on it. And, you know, admissions officers are not going to click on everything and there's no guarantee they'll click on anything. But you want to make it easy for them if they want to, so they can, especially if you've passed like that initial um, checklist of academics and test scores, if you have them then they're like, wow, this student, you know, sounds like they could be a good fit. Let me learn more about them so I can defend them in um, like committee if I want to push for them. So that you just want to make their job easier. Okay. So this student happens to have, so quickly, I just want to point out, she is junior class president. I think that should be higher. I And school ambassador. They should be grouped together with this executive associated student body president. Sounds to me like that three of them together screams, wow, CEO and really involved with leadership in her school. Um, that's how I would group that. And that's where organization is important. Then she's got JV varsity football team athletic trainer, which is you know more interesting um, leadership and then basketball. And then she comes back to varsity track. Like I'd like to see all the sports together potentially. The first sport, the most important one leading, but I would group them. Another thing that caught my eye was that when I added this up, she's got 12 hours for 35 weeks on JV varsity football, 11-12. Uh, and then she's got basketball, 22 weeks, 10 hours. These guys have to overlap because she did both of them in 11-12. 
So when I kind of added up what I thought the way it was presented, it seemed to me like, like some of this stuff was like 40 hours. Um, this is another thing, 20 weeks, eight hours. Like, I'm not saying she didn't. I just really suggest that she go over that because when I did a quick thing of it, it seemed like 40 hours a week. And that's pretty extreme. Um, so that's something to be mindful of. Uh, and I know their averages and all that kind of stuff, because if you work more in the summer, it may be 40 hours a week and you're only working eight hours a week during the school year, it might be slightly off when you do the average. I get that, but I just, that's something I would suggest the student uh, looks into. And um, let's see. Oh, and just so the personal, the personal essay, she writes about school spirit. And, but what, what's interesting, I, I'm assuming she can do this. I would put a space after this question because when I read this, I missed this line. And the winners of Homecoming Spirit 2021 are, I, I thought that was part of the question. And I jumped to the junior class student section erupted in uncontrollable tears. I thought that was the beginning of the essay. So if she can address that, that would be great. Oh, um, all in all, she talks about, um, you know, how her class was affected by COVID and how she was instrumental in really getting them to have school spirit. And then she reflects upon living in Paris um, and how it was a big adjustment for her. And this is where I thought she could maybe sprinkle in some French, um, but she realized what an opportunity it was. And she turned, um, you know, she, she changed her attitude and showed perseverance and resilience and really began to embrace being in Paris. And then she comes back um, you know, uh, to her, what's going on in her school and stuff and how she gets um, the kids excited and shows her leadership. But in this, it might be, she might wrap up talking about, you know, um, how she's looking forward to being in management and leading, you know, people in her entrepreneurial ventures. I don't know, like that could be some way to kind of bring it back, but just quickly pointing out, I just saw, um, a couple mistakes with grammar. Um, let me just see. So uh, this on uh, this, um, the underdogs had beat, that should be had beaten. Uh, there's another one that I found. Um, the pandemic striked my junior class. It should be struck my junior class. So definitely get people to go get another pair of eyes on these essays and make sure you know mistakes like that are caught. And so um, did not, like I said, nothing with regard to um, additional information in here. She had to put in courses, grades and stuff. Some schools make you do that. And that's her application. I mean, that's it. So um, Debbie, do you want me to quickly show that other one with the abbreviation or do you want to go to questions? What do you think is best? Yeah, let's go to questions. Okay, it, so I will okay. stop my share then. Okay, great. So I hope um, people found that helpful. I know we covered a lot. I'm sorry for that, but I hope it was informative. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll back um, and catch a few good questions. Um, actually, here is one. Somebody asked uh, if the college is accepting the Common App. Are is there potentially anything else that they are that they are asking for? So, like, so for example, should they check the college website, or do we assume that if the college is, is um, accepting the common app, that's all they need to look at in terms of, you know, what needs to be sent in? Yes. <laughs> you don't want to send more than they, you don't want to not follow directions, but a student can reach out to an admissions officer and send an email and introduce themselves and say there isn't a supplemental essay, like a YS, the student can say, this is what I love about your school. This is why I'm applying. This is what I want to study. And they could, like in that context, offer a little bit more. Um, the, oh, the other thing I forgot, some students do have, um, you know, they might, um, a school might ask for a portfolio if they want to study music or theater or art. And then that is an additional thing that a student can submit. They should only do that if they are going to major in it. They might love to do art on the side. They might have great, you know, a portfolio of sorts, but if they don't want to major in art, that they don't send it in because um, that usually gets sent off to the professors of like art professors, and they don't want to waste those professors' time if the student isn't going to major in it. 
So there was a question, and I, I don't think it, um, Ellen, this was on this sample common app that you showed, but it was about um, if a student took a, a course at a community college and it was dual enrollment, where would they put that? Okay. So it depends how it's done with your school. I would suggest talking to your counselor because sometimes those um, classes are put on your transcript. So a student should always ask for their transcript and they should go over it and make sure there are no mistakes. They need to understand their transcript. They should also go over their school profile that should be found on the website. Usually it's on the first page or it could be under the guidance counselor section go over these things and understand it because that is what the um, admissions officer is going to have. So uh, you want to make sure that everything's correct and that you understand the lens through which your application will be viewed. Uh, this is a particular activity. I know it comes up and is asked about a lot, but where would you put Eagle Scout? So that was similar to what I had for the Girl Scout. So if it's, you know, so it, Okay, got it. Is it an honor? I understand yes, the question. Yes, Is it an yes, honor yes. an activity? Yes, got it. Yes, okay, yes. sorry. <laughs> I'm on the hot seat here. So <laughs> I would say, okay, it depends how many activities there are, because it could be, if, let's say the student has 10 activities and filled and doesn't have room for Eagle Scout, even though it's important, that could be an honor. And then in the additional information section, the student can expand upon specifically what they did, bullet did to become an Eagle Scout and what project they did. So that's a great way to, um, you know, really utilize the space as much as possible. Uh, another question, and I know you showed the example of um, somebody who had, a, 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 they shared their weighted GPA, but is there truly a preference? Uh, um, if, if they have the unweighted, should they be doing that? Does it matter whether they end up choosing weighted or unweighted, or it's, it's obviously they just okay. need to explain the scale and yeah. what they're sharing? Okay. So ultimately, we could split hairs over this all night. Ultimately, colleges take it with a grain of salt because they are going to unweight. They are going to look at what you provide them and they are going to do, make everyone the same. So they unweight everything anyway. They reduce it down to an unweighted GPA generally. Some schools, some state schools will reweight. Now, I know like UMass Amherst, like they, I think, give a half point for honors and a full point for APs. So every school is different, but you can't control that. Um, and the other thing they look is the rigor. They look at how many APs there are. So um, you can, I would ask your counselor how they recommend the student input it. Uh, but ultimately they just kind of look at it quickly and then they do their own calculations with your transcript. Um, okay, I'm jumping to questions about the hours. So just to confirm, because you did show the example or you actually included um, in your discussion that you included travel like yes. uh, um, in terms of um, hours for an activity. Yeah. Well, particularly for a sports. Yeah, exactly. Because yes, so what's the question? No, they were just saying, um, so does travel count for hours and for activities? Yeah, it's sucking up their day, right? And, and some students might travel 45 minutes or an hour to school. Like that should be in the additional information section. If we don't know that, that's really good to know. This kid is traveling two hours on a subway, maybe an hour and a half. Some of these kids are amazing what they do. So that's, that's, something, that's something the counselor can touch upon and the student can put in the additional information section. So um, another question about hours. What if it's the same activity, but they're working different hours on that activity in the summer versus the school year? Again, yeah, that's a blended thing. So like I gave an example of 40 and eight, right? Maybe that average, because it's weighted so much to like 40 weeks a year is going to bring down the average. So maybe the average is, you know, um, 15 hours, but they can say in summer, I think in my example, I might've said 40 plus hours in summer work 40 plus hours there you go it's back in the average is correct but now you're showing i'm a hard worker in the summer so there's just ways to you, just get someone to look at it and ask them does this make sense get get someone who hasn't seen it before right you know so there were a lot of questions about what if my student is um undecided they don't have a major um is that something like you know going to be held against them? Should they be focusing on something else? You, you described about at the end of the essay, try and 
to you know yeah. tie it back potentially to the major should you know should they yeah. focus on just intellectual curiosity is yeah. this going to be kind of like held against them that they yeah. that they don't have this no major no it doesn't thing. have to be no no and you have to remember the future plans is more of a profession when they get into the individual colleges it's they'll ask what are you interested in majoring in like liberal arts schools will say what three things do you want to study so i hope if a student's undecided they have three things they're interested in so they would put those down so it's just more right now a student doesn't know what they want to study but they love reading so and and so maybe the student puts down that they might be interested in publishing it, this is just today this is not signing on the dotted line it's just they want to know that the student has some kind of direction some thought you can put on the side it down but really if you're going with a narrative and you're trying to max everything out why it's essentially leaving it blank and why would you so that's all so along the same lines, um, there was a lot of questions. Is it okay to leave the additional information section blank? Um, so maybe just some, do you have any other examples of why somebody would use the additional information section? And, um, you know, there is, an, I mean, when we say, it's kind of like, I like to um, share the comments that um, Becky Sabke, who is an admissions officer that we um, talked with always shares, that she, she was uh, an admissions officer at Dartmouth and she kind of always felt she was um, like, like a lawyer trying to figure out all the pieces of evidence. And, you know, the Common App really is your big piece of evidence that you're submitting to the colleges. And there's nothing wrong with using that additional information section. It does not have to be some epiphany of information that you know, um, you know th that you couldn't get in someplace else. Um, sometimes it could just be an explanation about your courses and why you had to take a certain course because maybe the timing of that of the yeah, course conflict. you wanted yes. to take, yes. but you couldn't fit it in. But now this kind of gives some you know context as to why that course was the one that you had to take even though it wasn't the one you wanted to take. Yes, no, that's a great example of it. Yeah, you wanted to take this AP, whatever it was, comp sci to whatever, I'm just making something up and you had a conflict and you couldn't. So yeah, that's great to know. And someone asked about would you or wouldn't you put a medical con condition in there? If the medical condition explains an issue with grades, then you might consider putting it in. But if the medical condition is not affected grades, I would not disclose that. There's no reason to. Um, that would be my suggestion on that. Someone also asked, what if you don't have APs? Well, if you don't have APs, they read it in the context of your school. So if your school doesn't have AP or IB, that's all in the school profile and it's understood and that is fine. So uh, that's just a question. And here's another, um, somebody asked, can I use the COVID section to explain changes in schools I attended? I personally would use the additional information section to explain yeah. that. There's um, also a change in progress. I think that's where it goes under that, um, you know, or change in progression or something. Yeah, I think it's progression. So that's where you would change, talk about different schools. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like the, the um, additional information section, I know uh, like at my daughter's school, um, they could only take three HL level school, HL level classes for their IB program. The IB program lets you take four. Her school limited it to three. It's on her, um, it's on the uh, uh, school profile, but if you're afraid it will get lost, that could be something you highlight in the additional information section, something like that, but that's anomaly. Some of these schools, kids can't start taking APs until senior year, probably in the, um, the school profile, but if it isn't there clearly, put it in the additional information section. So Alan, there were a lot of questions um, related about letters of recommendation, because we didn't really go over that in detail, yep. but, and a lot of them were related to um, deadlines. How do you, how do we know, how do they know that the um, teacher writing the letter of recommendation um, is going to submit it in time for the deadline? And what if they don't? Well, they, the colleges give the teacher some slack. So they cut them some slack. So I think usually it's like a week or two after the deadline. They understand this is a big burden on these teachers and it's the colleges that are putting it on them. So they, if they don't make it exactly, that's okay. I do always recommend that teach students and it's getting a little late for this, write a cover letter to their teacher, highlighting 
suggesting, you know, what they might want to put in in, in the cover, in their letter to help support their narrative. Um, so it's a little late for that, but that's something I always recommend. A um, cover letter with their resume, giving it to their teacher. Yeah. So uh, if you're if the student's not reporting any test scores. There's a question here, do they still need to put in test dates? So they, I, I'm assuming they, they're in this case, they took the test, but they don't want to report it. Yeah. There's no, no. need to, to yeah, report correct. the test. If, if they're, if they're going to do a future date, they can put that in, but yeah, yes, they, they do not need to put anything in. And then what about if they took multiple um, tests, you know, on different yeah. dates? Do they, yeah. have, do they have to put in all, do they just put in their best? That's a, I, I I would assume it's how many you've taken in general. I, you know, I, I think that's just an honor thing. I, you know, I, I don't know the exact answer to that. I would imagine you're supposed to declare all of them because that's what they're asking, but I, you know, they're not gonna come after you. Some schools, some schools, very few make you report all of them. Yeah, I, I think the rationale for actually reporting um, all of them is really the schools want to reflect well on you and them. And what they end up doing is that they will super score, yes. um, it, you know, and knowing if you've got, you know, yep. different test scores. Yep. And they want that ability to do that. Exactly, because <laughs> it looks better for them to have the higher right. score. Exactly, right. yes, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, someone asked about disclosing ADHD. It depends if your student's affected by it, you know, then they, they you know, it's, it's, those things are hard. That's something to discuss with your counselor and see what they think. But if the grades aren't affected, don't disclose it. So there's a question here about the formatting of the essay in terms of um, indenting or full block. I don't think it matters. Oh, I did. Thank you for bringing it up. My other issue with the essay is I like it much smaller, bite-sized paragraphs, quicker and easier to skim and read, less dense, less intimidating, more inviting. So that is what I would do for um, formatting. You know, sure, you know, the other things, but definitely more like, um, you know, maybe eight to 12 cent, um, lines per paragraph. Oh, this is interesting. Somebody's saying, it appears that most schools do not want the courses and grades section completed. So how do they verify grades and GPA? They get the transcript. So that, that section that I quickly showed you, that's because some schools, they have to take the transcript and put it into their own formatting and it's tedious and takes some time. So some schools want students to do it for them. So not all schools do that, but the schools that do, like the student had to do, um, inputted it from her transcript. Otherwise the transcript gets sent with the school profile from the guidance counselor. Uh, another question, under the common app, under recommendations, every college states the mid-year report, but the college website does not state that. Which one do you do? Well, you should do what's on the Common App. And, and you know, if it says on the Common App that it needs to be submitted, then that's what you should do. And if you're really not sure, then reach out to the admissions office. But if you've got great mid-year grades, you'd want them to know that. Because senior year, you know, that should be your hardest year, like say you're taking your most APs, your most challenging classes, they see so little of that year. And, and if you're trending upwards, it's even more important to show that as a senior, you're you know, doing that much better that you've continued that upward trend. Um, so this is a question a little bit like outside of the common app specifically, but um, some colleges in lieu of an interview um, are offering that a student can send in a video. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the question? Any suggestions, which one would you go with? Oh, I wouldn't do the video, but that's just me. <laughs> you know, it, it's what your, your student, I, I would never want to go live in front of people. Um, no, it just depends what your student feels comfortable with. You know, if they're creative, it depends. Are they better communicator through the written word? It really depends what works best for them. Some schools don't give them an option, you know? Um, I, I don't know if there's one that's better than the other. It just, I, I'm just so glad we didn't have to do that, do that Debbie back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's a question that does come up a lot. I, I'm glad somebody asked, uh, 
they're asking, isn't there a question about whether or not the family is going to, the student is seeking financial aid? If I'm interested in merit aid, but don't expect to qualify for financial aid, should I check yes or no? Well, you're more likely, so we know that people that, people that are full pay have a, a better advantage. We know that, unfortunately, that's just the fact, those are the facts. But if you, you should do the net price calculators. And if it really looks like you're not going to get anything, then you should make sure that merit isn't tied to it because sometimes you have to do at least the FAFSA to be considered for merit. So you then need to find out with each school whether or not you need to do it. But if you aren't going to get aid and, um, you know, that's the thing. If you aren't going to get aid, can you afford 80,000 if that's what it's going to be? Now, if you know you're targeting schools with merit, then, um, then, then, then you have to target schools with merit. You can't go after schools that don't have merit. So it's a whole kind of strategy of, of what you're thinking. Um, but yes, if you aren't going to get any money, not selecting financial aid could give you a benefit. But some schools, if the next year your student loses their job, some schools say, no, no financial aid for you. You told us when you signed up, you don't need any. Because some people will take it as an advantage to get into the school and then think the next year they'll get aid. So they don't apply even though they need it. So these are all things you need to ask a school because some schools will let you if you lose your job and help take care of you where other schools say no. Right. I, I just wouldn't use this to kind of game the system, exactly. meaning if you truly need financial aid and, you know, from the estimates that, you know, you're looking at the net price calculator, it looks like you're close to getting financial aid. Maybe you're not 100 percent sure, but, you know, you're in that possibility. I would be truthful and say, yes, I need the financial aid, even though you might think and it might be the case where if you say I don't need financial aid, it might give your student a better chance. If you need it, then you're better off telling them now because your student then might be accepted and you can't really, I mean, you can go back and ask for financial aid after that, but they might basically say, well, when we admitted you, that was, you know, we admitted you assuming you weren't going to need the aid. So, and, and Debbie also, if they're applying to need aware schools, even if they check off aid, financial aid department comes back and says they have no need. Then you go in the full pay pile, which gives you an advantage. That's at the need aware schools. Now, need blind, that's not going to you know, happen because they're not supposed to know, supposedly. So that's an interesting thing, too. There's, there's so many layers to understand and know. And okay. you can also call a financial aid department and ask questions. They're really great about answering them if you're not sure, if you're not sure how to fill something out. Uh, somebody asked, is there a way to highlight that they did a self-study for the AP test? So I guess they didn't take the class. Mm -hmm. they just took the AP test. Additional information section. Because that shows intellectual curiosity, that shows, uh, you know, drive, independence. Okay. Um, oh, this is a good question. What if your student has an IEP? Um, should that be, you know, discussed anywhere? Any again, thoughts? again, yeah, it's just when you, a school a admissions officer looks at your transcript, is there something there that that will help to explain through that lens that will help the student? Like if a student, you know, there's some students that, you know, might have, you know, high functioning straight A students, they might have ADD. I know students that are, are like that, but they're, they're straight A students. They were, are not going to disclose they have ADD because it might be used against them. There's no reason to disclose it. So it all depends. But if, you know, it can be put in the context that, you know, I had these lower grades for freshman year because I had this um, learning challenge I didn't know about yet. And then we figured it out and I got the resources and support I need needed. And then my grade shot up that's a great time to put it in. So I need more context to understand. Uh, so there's a question here, which actually I have not seen, but um, it says, how do schools view if you don't mark them as your top choice? I believe the common app asks if a particular school is your top choice. 
No, the I haven't app seen does that. Not ask that. No. Yeah, yeah. No, because this information doesn't get shared. Yeah. With any other, no. I think someone was asking about like where you put. I think they meant major choices. The major choices are under the specific schools that those could be their questions. And it could be like, our, if you're doing engineering, then you're applying to the engineering school period. And you're not getting choices unless they're engineering choices within the engineering school. So every school is different. And that's why that's their section of the common app. And they can ask whatever questions they want. So um, another good question kind of like to just clarify what the common app is really used for. Um, is financial aid through the Common App? And that actually could be another reason why um, you they ask, are you applying for financial aid? Is because they need to match up whether or not you have filled out the FAFSA. But financial, but the financial aid is not through the Common App. It is yes. through correct. They will um, ask, are forms. you applying for financial aid? And then you check yes, and that's all you do with it. And then you have to make sure that the social security numbers match. If when you fill out the FAFSA and you put the wrong social security number on that one and um, the common app, they don't match, then they won't be mated together or paired together when they get to the college. So that's important to do. But yes, all you do is check off the box that yes, you're applying for financial aid on the common app. The rest is the FAFSA through the FEDS or end or end or or in addition, the CSS profile, which is some colleges, about 300 have that. So um, again, a question about the financial aid. Confused about the financial aid question. If a student does not have financial need, but would like to be considered for merit, do we indicate we will fill out the FAFSA? So just so you know, so the, the FAFSA, and this is a little bit um, school by school, um, you do, if you aren't going to apply for financial aid, um, a lot of schools you do not do not need to fill out the FAFSA for merit, but there are some schools, and, and I don't have a list offhand. It's it's um, just a, a good question to verify with schools. Some schools still do require that you fill out FAFSA to in order for them to review you for for merit. And the rationale I have been I have been told for that is they want to make sure that you truly don't. Um, need to receive any need-based aid before they um, um, offer you merit. Um, and so, I've also heard too, they want to get as many dollars as they can from work study. You know, before, from the again, before they're yeah, offering yeah. merit. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, you know, I, I, unfortunately in this whole space of college admissions, the word depends is answered a lot because uh, every school gets the chance to kind of make their own little mini set of rules. So again, I would say generally, most schools, you do not have to fill out a FAFSA to be um, reviewed for, or, or, um, for merit, but it can't help hurt. It's a simple question. I would verify with the school before uh, making that assumption. There were a lot of questions about the a, a three on the AP. <laughs> you know, that's that's it's just a really tough one. What I suggest doing is every single school look to see what they give credit for and then decide. Like some schools sometimes only give credit for a five, depending upon the subject. You just have to look at each school and do it a case by case basis. Again, they can't unsee what they see. They aren't supposed to hold it against you what they don't see. It's a tough one. I, I see all sides of it and I, I just don't, you just have to make the call yourself. Um, but like I said, if it's, if it's a state school that gives credit for three, absolutely report it. That's a no brainer. But the other ones I've heard, you know, uh, people suggest both sides of it and it's, it's a tough one. But you can change your application each for every single school, as we've said. So you can submit some scores for some schools and not for others. And that's a great um, tip. And you gave lots of little tricks and tips, Ellen. And so I'm going to wrap it up on um, that statement. Thank you, everyone. I, hopefully this was helpful. I mean, my biggest words of advice um, is, you know, um, be thorough. Kind of, you know, as Ellen really well demonstrated, use as use, you know, what they whatever character counts you were given to the maximum. Um, I love the recommendation or how um, Ellen showed um, to capitalize, you know, some words to kind of make them stand out. Um, this is kind of like the the packet of evidence, you know, if we're to, if in that law analogy that uh, students are putting together for the college. And, um, 
you know, just be thorough and creative and careful to make sure that, um, you know, you've, that they have shared everything that they want to share and, um, you know, and have somebody else look it over kind of like as that third party, because, um, you know, you want just to like an admissions officer who is not going to know anything about your student and they're basically handed this common app or they see the information. Um, you want to make sure that what your student wants to truly get across comes across. And um, the best way of kind of testing that is if somebody who's, you know, never looked at the common app for your student before does a, you know, and almost like say, you know, read this over in 10 minutes and tell me what, you know, what, what you know about my student is, is a good test. Yeah, and, and it's really hard uh, having gone through it for the second time last year with my daughter. It's hard to see it when you're so close to it. I actually had to get another professional in to like read over it and, and she caught some issues. It's just really hard. And, and unfortunately, we didn't have time to show another student's comment app that I wanted to show, but she had um, abbreviations for her work and I was telling Debbie, I looked at it four times and could not figure out what these abbreviations were. And I finally figured out they were the initials for the um, companies, four different places that she worked, like Pizza Hut, like PH, um, that she put down later. But it was just so confusing. I didn't know what it was. And finally figured out, and an admissions officer is not going to take the time to do that. So, you know, she could just have did more like counter server number of jobs at four different restaurants, you know, like that. Right. They and didn't necessarily need to know the names of the restaurants if she could. If she could that correct. It. Or that one place she was a pizza server, another place she was a counter server, whatever. You know, I'm just saying like, yes, the, she, she worked at four different restaurants, hard worker. And that that's more the key, you know? Yes. So these are just things that and or it could have been put in the additional information section, the different places she worked, whatever. But the abbreviations just threw me. I thought it was, you know, I just didn't know what was going on. And I spent too much time on it. So, OK, make so it, make uh, it easy for them. That, that's all. Make it easy. Make it clear. Make the narrative th threaded throughout. So they come away with all this evidence, like Debbie's saying, that this is what you want to study and that they want you on the campus because they see the impact that you've made at your school and the future impact that you can and will make at their school. Um, and just um, so people know up some upcoming events that we have. Um, actually on Thursday, we have an event with um, Prompt. We've had several of them. Prompt is a, a, an essay coaching company. Um, and that's a great event if you, I'm sure you've gotten emails about it um, where uh, Brad Schiller, the, the founder, really explains what colleges are looking for in essays, which kind of tie into what we talked about tonight, you know, in terms of that essay kind of being part of the, the narrative of the whole Common App. Um, and then uh, I don't have the exact date, but believe me, as October 1st comes close, we have um, two um, events, you know, one that just talks about that in general, what financial aid is. Um, we will address like some of the questions that we talked about here and even in much more depth, kind of the whole financial aid system. And then a specific uh, session on FAFSA, doing a walkthrough on FAFSA. And in, probably in the middle of October, a session on the CSS profile. So for good or for not so good, they're all coming fast and furious. This is the time. These forms are going to need to get filled out. So, um, so all that, you know, I mean, that, that this is like now becoming the parent work, the FAFSA, the CSS profile, you know, at the same time as the student needs to finish up essays and Common App. Um, so it's all starting to converge. Yes. And time is getting short and there's still time, but obviously the sooner that a student is able to bring things together, the more calm and peaceful life will be in the home. Yeah. And so the, just, Stephanie's asking, I don't have the exact date of the FAFSA. I think actually we have it scheduled for the Sunday. Um, I, I think uh, October, let's see, what day is that? Uh, it's uh, probably October 2nd. Um, and we like to do it actually, I know some people, like there's other places they might give you the FAFSA uh, before October 1st. We actually like to wait until the um, FAFSA goes live because sometimes it's just little changes that, the, that they might've made from last year. So we like to have, um, it live and then kind of walk through it um, so that, you know, people can see, because you never really know what they're going to have go live until it's live, even though they talk about some things that sometimes things don't actually happen and other things do. Um, so 
that's why and I wait. think I think they might be able to get their FAFSA IDs now, the student and yes. the parent one. So that's something you can do because that takes a few days. So if you're, but you know, really want to get going, that's something good to get going with. And if you already had a student who applied to college before, the parent doesn't get a new FAFSA ID. The this the new student applying to college only gets the ID and you use your ID that you already have. And I don't have the date in front of me for the CSS profile. It is definitely um, the, the, the second week um, of October uh, because um, we kind of like focus uh, beginning of October on FAFSA and then um, move on to the CSS profile just because there's slightly fewer people who the CSS profile is gonna impact. Yeah, only about 300 colleges give or take, so. Right. Yeah. So. Okay, well, thank you everybody. And um, reach out with questions, um, put them in the Facebook group, and um, I hope uh, people and students can, uh, you know, um, get this done without, and we're all friends at the end, right? <laughs> Within your family. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Nice. Okay, see you soon. Speaking with you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.